really, really good article, which basically taught me how to do it at this link. Um, if you want the slides again, let me know. Um, like I said, I'm not going to demonstrate how to build a project because it did take me a while. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so, yeah, we'll go through it. So, this is what you get, right? So, when you, it actually hooks into Perfmon on the server and it gets all these stats for you. So, basically, all, I'm, all this test is doing is hitting the home page. Um, I had a requirement, one of my clients is, so we have a requirement, you know, ha home page load has to be uh, 0.5 seconds or less. And search results is 0.5 seconds or less. That's the requirement for the project. So, with, you know, with, with measures like that, we have to sort of replicate it. So, with this, I'm able to throw users at a SharePoint farm and see how they're performing. So, uh, with the, sorry, so just with Visual Studio, you can do up to 500 users. There's also another thing uh, called a test agent, which you can install on more machines from separate machines. There's another thing which is that, I think you can buy it, which is like, you can get as many as 1,000 users per test week. So if you want to heap the users, all you have to do is set up, uh, you can run it from one version of Visual Studio, but set up the test week and test controller on separate machines, which is a good test anyway, right? So there's one issue I found with this is, I was testing it through the local like that, that on my phone, and I was throwing 1,000 users at it from one machine, but it was only giving one request by name. I didn't know what software I was, so I spoke to the network guy, and the load balance so it was coming from one IP address, so it was only going to one server. He's saying it's the same user. Let's, let's keep it here. So setting it up on several machines to test your load balance is, is you know, it's a really good test before you go live. See exactly how many users your organization has, what you how many you know concurrent connections you're expecting, and test it out before you go live so you don't get any performance issues. Um, the web test is the first one I'm going to show. Basically it hits the page, the home page, and tells me some information about it. And the load test, which is kind of cool, I've set up, it's going to take five minutes to run, so we'll just have to fill in some time while it runs. Um, so what it does, it starts at five users. It throws five users at the home page. Uh, it does a warm up for 30 seconds. And then every 20 seconds, it adds another two users, plus my VM. So obviously I'm not going to throw too much at it. Yeah. And we're going to collect all those stats. And the project actually writes the information to a database. And I'll show it at the end, but you can actually report them. So it builds Excel reports. You can export it to an Excel file. You know, do comparisons, export to HTML file as well, the results. It's pretty cool. So it's information that even, you know, your project stakeholders will find useful. So yeah, I've got the picture up the top there, the Visual Studio comes to the main machines. I don't know if that came across. So basically, I've got VMware Workstation running on my, on my laptop. It's quite a high-spec laptop, so I can give the VM a fair amount of resources. It's also running off a solid state, so it's been cool. I don't like to gray them. <laughs> <laughs> I can thank CSG for that. <laughs> so, what was I doing? So, this is a project. So basically what it's doing is it's, it's taking the URLs from an XML file and, and let's open the one we're going to use for the web test. You know, that's all you're going to do, it's, it's sort of drag and drop stuff. Uh, and the load test. So I'll demonstrate the web test first. So the web test is basically going to hit the home page and just get, get some information for me. So all you do is run it. As you can see, it's finished. It's pretty slow. <laughs> so you can see the status of 200, you know, your, your time, your response bytes, and you can see here every file that was loaded within that page and how long it took. So if you've got a web part, you know, on your home page, you can see the files associated with that solution and how long they're taking to run. Usually uh, organizations do have web parts, you know, custom web parts on their home page. So it's something to take into consideration. And you can see it, it tries to render it. It doesn't always work. It works sometimes and it doesn't other times. It's probably me. Um, but in the request tab here, we can see you know, a whole bunch of information. You can also choose your browser version, your browser, you know, browser type. I 
done ID8, um, any host, machines, things like that. The response. Context. So if I click on, for example, this CSS file, I can see all the, I can even see the CSS that's been executed. So it's quite cool. Alright, so the load test is slightly more impressive. So let's keep that up and let's just make sure it works out. So your step load pattern is what I explained earlier. So how many users you're going to start, how long your more period is, and how often you can increment it, and how many more you're going to throw out at each increment. And then you've got your run settings here. So basically this tells you how long you're going to run it for and what your maximum user threshold is. So there's no point in keeping it on forever. If you want you want to hit a max, right? So until you, you just run it and box it for over the edge. And here you get the storage type, so it's logging all this to a database. Uh, run duration, you know, sample rates of five seconds, so it collects information every five seconds. Anyway, enough talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. As you can see, I'm very fluid with the user. Cool, so you can see up the top there, say warm up period, so it's counting down. And you see it's already collecting information. So you can set up counters and that, this is all default, so this is what you get when you just create a test project. So, what, so when, you, you know, when you gather this information and you show it to, to your project stakeholders and your project manager, Great, great person to show this kind of stuff to. They can see the value. Um, you know, it may, it may take a while to set these things up, but when you go live, you can make sure that your system is, is up to scratch, right? It's going to handle the amount of users that you're expecting to, have, to be thrown at it. So, like, SharePoint, you know, it always gets blamed for bad performance. This is a way to test it for them. So obviously uh, I've got to fill some time in for four minutes and 20 seconds. Chris? Yes? Um, obviously that's only you know, uh, mimicking page hits. Yes. So use the page. Is there any way to set up like, queries or sources? Yes, so I, I, I attempted to do that and I didn't get it quite right for this presentation. But we, uh, I've tried to do uploading a document to a document library on the home page. So I hit the page, upload a document. Um, I had it working and then it stopped working and I didn't get time to fix it. But it wouldn't take much to get it going. So yeah, you can, do, you can put code in, you can do what you like. So, if, you, you know, if, if you've got a, a developer friend, then handball it to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you enjoying the uh, day so far? Is anyone not enjoying it? No? Not looking for the handle, but... <laughs> Apart from Visual Studio, are there the load balancing tools? Tools that you can use as well? <clears throat> I did ask this question, so... Um, I've said, uh, yes, there are, but no one really recommends anything other than this. Um, I don't personally know of any. I mean, you can do perf monologues. Can, there's a great tool called PAL, P -A -L. so you can set it up, uh, you can set perf mon logging up on your server, and you collect all the data, and you run it through PAL, which is a PowerShell-based tool, and it builds pretty graphs, and it, it basically writes a HTML file for you. You can open it up, and it tells you, you know, all the information about that server. So, um, before we do MOS upgrades, for example, I'll go out to a client and I'll, I'll set power logging up on their on all their servers, and I'll leave it for two days, and I'll basically get that information. I'll run it through a, through the tool, and I can see exactly how loaded up these servers are, where the load is, you know, what's happening. You know, you can set it up on SQL as well if you've got a nice DBA that will let you do it. Most time they won't, um, but if you're a good DBA, they should have those stats for you anyway, right? So. Yeah, it's good. So obviously, 2010 is a little bit more load in different areas than MOS, and you gotta you gotta design your farm, in a, you know, to, to allocate for these kind of things. There's no point doing a straight for straight 2007 to 2010 when, for example, you it's gonna be a DMS, right? Because uploading and downloading large files consumes memory on your web front end. So things like that, you know. Is the load testing staying in the Ultimate Edition for Visual Studio 11? No, they're shuffling 
a few things but, around. Uh, I wonder if it's still top tier or... Yeah, that's a good question. I, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I have a question about the power share thing. Yes. Over the time of the project, uh, we do more and more power share. The complexity of your script increases. Yeah, it definitely and, does. Yeah, it's yeah. one. It's one of those things that um, jump in, have a go. You know, and there's lots of stuff on the net. So you Google around, you get lots of examples. So uh, I learned a hell of a lot. There's a script called Auto SQL Store. Everyone probably knows it. Um, that if you open that up and actually have a look at what it's doing, it's doing some pretty amazing stuff. So um, just checking out what it's doing, use samples. You know, I mean, I did that. That's how I learned it. So. Just looking at samples and going through. I mean, I my first job was a Cold Fusion developer, right? So that's a scripting language um, to say something. Uh, but I stopped doing that and uh, got more into the infrastructure, like application, like packaged application, like SharePoint, for example, kind of space. And um, yeah, I've been doing it ever since. I started working with SharePoint in 2008, and I didn't. I did development in SharePoint for about six months. So. I don't have a huge development background in SharePoint, but PowerShell is quite easy for me to pick up. So, you know, if you invest the time, you can do it. It's not, it's not hard. It's quite logical to read. Do you want a group countdown on the last 10 seconds? <laughs> it's getting pretty exciting. Why not? <laughs> As you can see, we've hit some uh, thresholds here um, for computers. So. I'll tell you what that is right now. That's when CPU has got above 75%. And at the end of it, it brings up this nice little summary page. So you can see 95 of the page. Uh, where, where are we going here? Sorry. Let me just let me scroll down. So the average page time is 0 0.23 seconds, and the total count of hits is 2,501. So it's hit that page a lot of times. So it should be pretty warmed up, right? Um, so you've got your average processor time. Yeah, so it, you know, it, it's general. Like I said, you can configure counters for whatever you want to whatever you want to measure. Um, so the max user load it got to was thirty three. So another cool thing, oh, I think it's cool. So you can do this create an Excel report. So you can say create a report. You can do a comp comparison between two runs. So if you change something, <coughs> so for example, you've added more memory to your server, or you've added another virtual CPU, and you've run the test beforehand, you can run it afterwards and see if your stats have actually you know improved. So we'll just do a trend. You can see Excel plus SSDs. <laughs> so it gives you this information in a uh, pretty fashion. So, you know, it's taken the perf model logs, it's, demonstrated, it's showed you with your CEO, and now it's actually put into Excel file. You know, email this around to your project team. It's great stuff. I know I'd like to see it anyway. So that's about it for the demo. If you want any um, any questions about the solution at all, I'm happy to give you, you know, a run through. You can have a look at it afterwards if you want. Um, anything, anything you want to ask any questions about, let me know.